actually watching on her laptop and implementing on her phone. And she said, already she's seen results. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference of being there in person where you just have to stay focused on the speakers where virtually you can kind of try to do some of the things that they're recommending. I mean, this was the best training I think I've ever been to in my nine and a half years doing this business. And yeah. I paid three times as much. I paid $300 and it's $97 right now. It, it's like a no brainer. We're not, no going brainer. To conf- we're not going to conference. So why not invest that money into GoPro? $97, we would pay 500 to go to conference. So, why, not in, why not do something crazy? Sharon and I, we won't say how many we're buying, but we're buying multiple t- tickets because we're going to find new people that we can say, hey, you need to go to this. And yep. the price so is we're committing. Go up. What'd you say, Sharon? The price is going to go up. I mean, it was like three oh, yeah. or $400 this time. When we went in person, it was $400 unless you got a discounted ticket and we paid $200 plus we flew there. Plus we had room and board, you know, all that. Well, let's just say in the this organization, it's a lot like um, rank makers with... Um, What's his name? Ray 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 Higdon. You have to just be aware that there's like low cost entry points and there's great, there's free entry points. The podcasts are excellent for both of them, right? Mm -hmm. But the next level up is to go to GoPro and it's really, really good. The next level up is to wait and then they triple the price for those tickets. The next level up is they do sell you a bunch of stuff while you're at GoPro, but whatever you know you just got to be confident and and know what you want and what you can afford and you know don't let them investment it's It's an an investment investment. it's It's not you're spending this money to just kind of sit and not get anything back i honestly feel like i have gotten back 10 times as much as how much i paid for my ticket that's how much i've gotten back it's going to take my business to the next level because as long as I implement this stuff, now you can go and not implement anything and then you won't get your money back. You're just have had a really great experience. But if you're going to implement even like two out of the how many things, and I mean, they had Sylvester Stallone on the stage. They had like the best of the best speaking of all industry, like everyone in the industry, that's the best of the best. And so, that's yeah. to the next level. So I went to uh, the sideline NMDs chat and I'll give you some names of the people that were there. I mean, it seems kind of like nobody really talks about it in Juice Plus, but I think it's growing. Um, I said, who else went to the conference? D. Lucas, Tammy Lamison, Sarah Cohen, Courtney Shaw, Stacy Whitmer, Robin Elizabeth, Colleen Wilkinson, D. Lucas, Lawrence Slocum, Carmen Maxwell, Carol Watts. Oh no, not Tara Watson. I mean, so these are all, it's just like- uh, Dean DeBoot was in my group and Lauren, I was in Lauren Lahab's pod in her room. So, and there were a lot of NMDs in there. Cheryl April. I mean, what the heck? How come I was in some random room with like- Tamara, Tamara Sachs. I was in in a private Zoom with Tamara Sachs. Yeah, I was with Jamie Quincy. And I mean, we ended up in a small room yeah. together when we were doing the chats and that was gold. Her and this, that me, we went back and forth. She knew me. I was like, oh, wow, it was amazing. She was like, oh, I'm so proud of you. I was like, wow. But she shared some nuggets in that because they broke it into rooms at certain t- yeah. parts. So you got to do real one-on-one conversations with like a small group of people, like six people. It was I, I sat in front of my computer for over 30 something hours this weekend. My family thought I was nuts. They were like, you're still on at 1230 at night. And I was just like, this, I can't even, I couldn't even move from the screen. It was so good. I know. Um, Emma yeah. came by and she's like, when is this going to be over with? When can I watch whatever from the main TV? Like, no, the whole weekend, this is what's happening. <laughs> I'm like, you can watch with us. Matthew was watching a little bit. Emma might have absorbed a little bit. That's always good for them too. Mm-hmm. Well, we're excited. Uh, we have some new people on this morning. I know Tammy's new. We're excited about that. Maybe Dr. Goddess Mona. Not sure. Um, yeah. Welcome. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the team. Hi. Awesome. And Nalani, I know you're going to to train us today and we really appreciate it. I want to mention one thing. I've reached out to some people 
about qualifying your business. Like the company has certain incentives to add more good incentive is done in December, right? Um, and so is the join the club incentive. So if there ever was a time to qualify your business, this is the time to make sure you do it because they're gonna have special speakers and things like that for those people who either qualified their business or had a one club. So um, keep that in mind. And that's for anybody who's QSC and above, okay. And as far as lunch and learns, it's today and Wednesday. And then we might do like a pop-up like Friday night or something for fun. You know, um, we'll try to add something like that in, in the mix. But for lunch and learns, it's today and Wednesday. And we have special guest Gwen um, sharing her story on Wednesday. It's going to be incredible. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Nalani. Thank you, Sandy, for organizing this on Mondays. And Dr. Nalani, we're excited to hear from you. Thank you. Wow, what an exciting time we're in. And welcome, welcome to those of you who are really, who are brand new. We're going to be just talking about just a couple of things, duplication and how, how do we duplicate and why do we duplicate? And the fact that um, this is a business that we get to do even at any time. So first, I'm going to have a sip of water. Something's in my throat. Okay. Well, I would. I have a question to ask everybody, and if you will just write for yourself. Why are you doing this business? Why are you here? Why are we here at twelve o'clock in the middle of the day? on another Zoom call, why? And, okay, so that's the first question, why? I'll give you just maybe a few more seconds. Thank you, Stacy. All righty, so I didn't even think about that. We could put it in the chat, but Stacy, um, Okay, so for anyone who's brand new, I guess you could raise, I, don't, I can't see you. Let's see if I can see you. Let's change the view, gallery. All right. So how about getting put on the spot? Um, let's see, Tammy. Are you uh, in a position where you can speak to us or are you driving? Which Tammy? Okay, Tammy, how, how long have you been um, a partner with us, with the company? Which Tammy is it, which Tammy are you referring to? You. Oh, okay. Um, oh, that's the only one I see. Is there another Tammy here? Oh, they mentioned another Tammy, so that's why. Um, I, I uh, thank you for asking. Uh, um, I started, I think in October is when I started. Awesome. And uh, Sony was the one who had, uh, you know, I reached out to Sony because I knew Sony was doing this a long time ago. And I just saw the opportunity for health and wealth for myself and my friends and family. So I decided to, um, join the business. I mean, I felt like it was a no brainer with so much going on and we would go grocery shopping and we'd waste so much food, right? With the organic mm. vegetables and stuff. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm gonna grow my own garden. And just a sidebar, I don't really, I'm not too fond of dirt, but I'm like, I wanna grow plants and stuff. And it was like, but I don't like dirt. They were like, Tammy, you gotta have dirt. You, you gotta have dirt to grow your vegetables. And now I realize I don't. So it really is just excited to, uh, have this opportunity to have my own uh fresh vegetables and fruits not it with dirt okay that's awesome so that's why you started with the tower gardens yes yes okay so so then why are you sharing why have you joined the business the business part is really i feel like it's a no brainer because it gives an opportunity to 
have health and wealth together, right? Mm -hmm. We have fresh vegetables, uh, fresh fruit, and then the opportunity to, it's a lucrative opportunity. So I get to share it with others. And so, um, yeah, I think that's it about the business. I feel like it's no. Do you have um, a goal that you want to reach with your business? Um, a financial I, goal? And thank you for asking that. Not that I'm present to. I'm not clear about what that looks like. And that's what I'm on today. Oh, oh, awesome. All righty. So then um, the question is for me, well, I'll just share with you what I've experienced. And then I have one more question for, for Tammy. My husband and I had, we were in New York and I had a wonderful experience working. I had our, um, I had a uh, massage therapy business and it was doing really well. And then when we moved to Florida, we were not able to duplicate what we had in New York. And in fact, we were living off our savings. Mm. And I was introduced to this business. And right about then, $1,000 looked pretty good. <laughs> you know, $500 to $1,000 a month. And now it's giving me options. And I have a lot more goals. I have some what I call big, hairy, audacious goals that will take a lot of money. This is not a get rich quick opportunity at all. Right. However, it's paying my bills where we live in a lovely gated community. It covers all our expenses. And more importantly, it gives us options. I have the option to say yes to family, to travel in, at a short notice if need be. And to me, that's the most important thing. And I'm sharing sure. it with others though now because there are a lot of people in our communities who are looking and are, they're suffering financially. Mm -hmm. And right. what we have, I mean, it's, I think it's an awesome thing. I think it's an awesome thing. So a lot of times I'm told, well, I like to, I like helping people and I like giving, you know, I like sharing and I want to see everybody happy and healthy. And my question is, do you have to have a business to help people? And do you have to have a business to help people be healthy? You really don't. I mean, you can volunteer. No. We can volunteer, right? Um, right. And, um, so, so that's what I say. Well, if you don't want to, if you really not, don't want to make money, then you can give me the customers and you can just uh, help people get happy that way. <laughs> so the right. question is, if there is something, and this is for everybody to think about, if you had something that you wanted to accomplish and it would cost any amount of money, it could be, it could be a small amount of money, it doesn't matter how much it is, how much would that be that you would like to have this business do for you? How much would you like that to be? And let's put a dollar amount on it. So you want, there's something you either want to accomplish or just take care of, put a dollar amount on that. Okay. And then with that dollar amount, how much time do you think, how many hours a week would you work for that? So the question is, if you have a part-time job, for instance, we say a full-time job is 40 plus hours and a part-time job is how many, 20, 23, 26 hours, something like that. How many hours do you think it would take you a week or how many hours would you want to give to your business to make that amount? And thankfully, we are in a position where it doesn't take hours and hours and hours, right? How much would you commit for that? 
So I'm going to go and look to, does anybody want to answer that? <laughs> yeah, I want money too, Doug, and I don't feel bad about it either. <laughs> yeah, so tell me that question again. Like, so for the amount of money that my goals are, mm -hmm. what is, what was the question? Like, what's a reasonable amount of hours? Amount of hours per week. Yeah. Does anybody want to? Well, that becomes a paradigm question for me because in my previous more of like my family background more blue collar um going into the education field it was kind of like i think this is for sharon too it's like we had we were the highest achieving people in the history of our families as teachers mm -hmm. okay so to go to the next level to be in a, a school administrator for both of us to get multiple master's degrees that's even the next level um but now to leave that and do this, the amount of money that we make now is much more than we would have made in our previous careers. And then to make the money we want to make, that we're going to make, um, traditionally growing up, I would have thought you had to work multiple jobs, 40 mm -hmm. hours a week on one and maybe 20 hours on another. And they'd have to be super, super jobs mm -hmm. or you have to go to law school or something crazy. So I feel like um, it's amazing if we can work, you know, 20 hours a week and make both of us make full-time incomes, you know, 20 hours plus we have our phone on, big deal, right? So they keep your phone on, you answer a message here and there, and then you, you work. I mean, I hate to say it's part-time. I don't want to send the wrong messages, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I did 25 years full-time. I know full-time. You know, full time yeah. is full time, but um, yeah. Okay, Sorry, I so I like that because you said it is part time. It is part time. Um, okay, so Gwen says your money goal is three to five thousand per month right now, and about twenty hours a week would be a good place to be. So the question then is, for those of us who feel like 20 hours, is, is there anybody who feels like 20 hours is a lot? No, everybody agrees 20 hours is, uh, is not, not a lot? Okay, is there anybody who is working 20 hours a week besides our national marketing directors besides Sharon and Doug and Stacy, Michelle. Okay. And you, you can answer the question to yourself. You don't have to say it aloud. Um, it's just something to think about because this is a business. And when we, as we always hear, you treat it like a business, it'll pay you like a business. But for those of you who are brand new, does that sound like a lot? 20 hours a week? Okay. So you know, I when I was to... brand new, it might have sounded a lot, 20 hours. Mm -hmm. But now that I've been doing this and I see like the bigger picture and I know like I'm really focused on the goal, 20 hours doesn't seem like anything, <laughs> honestly, to invest in myself and my business. It's just like, Truly. I, I used to invest way more than that for my full-time job. And okay. it, they didn't reinvest in me, really. So, so five thousand okay, so dollars a month with two weeks off of vacation a year at twenty hours a week is sixty dollars an hour. That's good. Just give you uh -huh. an idea of what you're talking about paying yourself. Mm -hmm. I heard okay, so so this weekend. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That was like if you've got to move from employee to entrepreneur kind of mindset or business owner mindset. And it was like, employees are looking for when can they clock out, you know, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. entrepreneurs or business owners are looking for when can I get back at it? And that's always kind of been my field because anytime you're investing in this business, it continues to grow into the future. So for me, I, I just enjoy the business mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to get away from the business, you know? Right, right. Okay, so the next thing that I was thinking about, though, is that 
what are you doing for those 20 hours? What are we doing? Are we, uh, what are we doing? Are we selling? You know, that's such a bad word, but if nobody buys, nobody gets paid. It's just a matter of how we present it, which makes the difference. So the question is, what are we doing in our business for those 20 hours? For that $5,000 a month or that 3,000 or that 1,000, what are we doing? Well, Alani, <clears throat> I'm Kathy, and um, uh, my job was in the ministry uh, helping caring for people. So there really is not another job like this. I, I don't feel like I've changed at all. I'm still doing what I want to do, um, helping people. But the cool thing is, um, I'm, I've never been uh, clocking hours, so I don't know how much time I'm spending but I love that analogy if you love what you do then you're never having to work and so when people say oh I don't want to I don't want to sell stuff I'm like "Ooh, me either I wouldn't do that for anything but when you love people and you realize that what you have can help improve their life forever and um, to me it, it's a no-brainer it's a no-brainer because um, I don't think about the hours. I, I focus on how many people can I touch today, not only with better health, but maybe just meeting some basic needs that they have, you know. Mm. And um, But um, I don't look at this as a job. I look at this as a ministry. And... Um, I just love, I love helping people and calling and checking on people. Guys, we've got the best job because do you realize how, how um, isolated people are and how um, people feel so disconnected and just a phone call, not, not even necessarily your uh, customer or not even necessarily, I wanna talk to you about Juice Plus, but just calling people just to see how they're doing, just to see how their family's doing. Um, um, are you guys doing okay uh, mm -hmm. Christmas? Are, are you guys, I know you've lost your job. What about Christmas? Is there anything I can do to help with your Christmas? And even though it may not be a whole lot, when you help meet people's needs, then they realize that, you know what? She's just wanting to be a friend. She's not wanting me to be a customer. And when you build on that week after week after week after week, and they realize you're not there really just to sell something, but you're there just to be there for them to help meet needs, then um, then when they want, when they are considering health, when they are considering, why do you have, why are you getting food yeah, off of a tower them. garden? in the middle of the winter, um, they're going to look you up. And um, I think the hard thing for me is. Uh oh, sorry, Kathy, that was my fault. Oh, OK, thank you. <laughs> Come back, hold on. Come back, Kathy. I'm sorry, I've lost the ability to mute for some reason. I'll make you a co-host, Nolani. Sorry about that. Thank you. Kathy's muted still. I'm mute. There you go. Well, I've just been doing this. <laughs> just know you've said a lot. We've got, we've got a lot from you. <laughs> Thank oh. you. Well, see, you have a servant's heart. And not all of us have a servant's heart. However, we can still do the same work and exactly. get the benefit. And that's why you're doing so well. So well, just I you, say, you, were, you were talking about how much money you're going to make. Yes. But even if you have a servant's heart and you love to help people, you may not be thinking about, okay, I want that cruise or I want a car payment or something. But you might be thinking about how many families could I help if I make an extra hundred dollars? How many, like I quit doing my nails. 
I love to get my nails done, but you know what? I've been doing my own nails. I've been cutting my own hair for seven months. And because I realized, you know what? I can go get my nails done or I could help that single mom get birthday presents for her daughter. I mean, it's just, it's just stuff like that, that it just <laughs> makes my day, makes my day. I love okay. it. I'll mute myself now. <laughs> okay, we can tell. That's wonderful, though. I mean, like you say, you'll never work a day in your life, right? Oh, no. Okay, so one thing that Kathy said really jumped out at me when she spoke of meeting somebody's need. Okay, once you meet their needs, well, how do we find out what their needs are if we don't ask questions? So I had started out by saying, oh, we're going to talk about duplication. <laughs> and the question is, like I said before, what are we doing? Are we selling or what kind of business is this? Really, this is a business of duplication. So Kathy has a tall order to duplicate herself, to find or to attract someone who is as giving and caring as she is. So how do we all find or attract somebody like ourselves? That's the question. If we want, and why is it that duplication is so important? I've been in the business 13 and a half years and I have yet to duplicate myself. Now though, with the tools that we have, learning of going to Eric Worre. And for those of you who don't know who Eric Worre is, Eric Worre is a guru for network marketing. And he has a wonderful program that you can go to. In fact, there's one coming up um, that's only $97. And um, that's amazing at that price. And, um, but the point is that once we learn, once we have the tools, and then we use the tools, then we can, then we can um, get successful and be successful and have whatever it is that we desire as a goal. So my question again is, how do we duplicate ourselves? Because if we are, if we're sharing the product, Stacy is a person who has duplicated herself. And, oh, I'm sorry, Stacey, I waited until you put food in your mouth. <laughs> but would you share with us how duplication works for you? Well, I think like if I look at Gloria, where I can say, you know, Gloria is the leader that develops leaders underneath her. I would say I haven't duplicated myself because Gloria is very different in her leadership style than me. She's very different in how she, she looks um, like she wants to know the details and I'm like the party. So like I want, you know, it's, it's the fun side of it for me, but she's, she's more serious about things. She really urged me into or pushed me into leadership because she had a lot of questions, things I really didn't care about. Like, I was like, I don't know, like, don't worry about that. But then because she wanted to know, I had to learn it. So what I would say with her is she had a lot of life skills I didn't have. I was in my, you know, mid 20s and she was a retired teacher. She mm. had networks. She had, um, you know, just people skills. She had you know, just life skills that I didn't have. So I like to look for people that are better than I am. And then how can you develop their strengths and encourage them? And then I would say, um, show the way, you know, if I'm not doing presentations, my team isn't going to do them. If mm -hmm. I don't teach my new people to do them, they won't do it. So what, what am I demonstrating in my own activity in, yeah. in building a business? Because I've heard this and I really find it to be true. Our team is going to do half of what we do. And then their team's going to do half of what they do until they really decide for themselves, I am going to do this. Then they will match how much you do because 
they're in it for themselves. They're really doing this business. They're taking it serious. And then their team duplicates half of that. So um, to me, it's a level of activity of what mm. I'm doing is going to reflect the team that I'm building as well. Mm. I can't Thank ask you. them to do things I'm not doing myself, right? Okay. So is there anybody here? Thank you, Stacy. Is there anybody here who is happy with the amount that they're making and really doesn't want a team? You know, everybody doesn't have to have a team. Everybody doesn't have to duplicate, really. It's according to what you've written down on your paper as to what goals you have and what you want to, where you want to go with it. So is there anyone who does not um, does not really want a team to be responsible for. And so, so then the assumption is that everybody here wants a team and wants to build a team and wants to duplicate. And the best thing that, okay, so I, I have what I'm thinking, but I keep asking the questions because I wanted to get it from you, where, do you go to find the answers to how? The how, you know, we have the why, we have the desire, but the how. How do we build a team? How do we duplicate? How do we even meet people, or especially at a time like this when everything is on social media uh, and we're not able to get out? How do you duplicate? How do you build a team? And where do you go to find out how? That was um, several questions wrapped in one, but um, I say duplicating, you wanna keep things simple mm -hmm. so that it is easy for the next person to do and then to share and then they to share because it's so simple that mm -hmm. it's hard to deviate from anything that's complex. Um, how do you do that? Like you wanna attract people to you, right? You wanna attract people to what you're sharing. So you're marketing in a way that attracts people to you. Okay. And how, and how is that done? And that can be done in a lot of ways. That can be done on social media, that can be done in conversation, that can be done on Zoom, that can be done on um, in like emails that are being sent. Like there's so many tools that we use to market ourselves. And so it's not a one-stop shop. There's a lot of options. And in today's world, we have more options than ever in ways that we can market ourselves. Thank you, because you said the magic word. The magic word is tools. We have the tools. Mm -hmm. Now, Mike, this is another question. I'm going to stop bugging you with my questions, with my simple questions. But this question is, are you using your tools? Am I using the tools that we have? Where are the tools? For those of you who may be brand new and don't even know where the tools are. OK, so the tools are, of course, on the freedom revolution. We've got every single there thing there. And if you've read Eric Worre's books and you match it with what we have on the freedom revolution, you know that they go hand in hand. It's the exact same thing. So we don't have to re recreate the wheel. We don't have to try to figure out, oh now how am I gonna do this? Michelle mentioned social media. Where do we go to learn about social media? The Freedom Revolution, right? And, and of course, whoever sponsored you, your mentor in the business, that, those are the tools. So the question is, are we using the tools that we have? Are we being honest with ourselves? Or are we doing busy work? Are we scrolling through um, Facebook or are when we get on social media, do we have a purpose and do we know what that purpose is and do we know how to do what it is that we want to do for the results that we're getting? And I know I keep asking a lot of questions, but if, if any one of those questions is one that you don't know the answer to for yourself, 
then that's a good thing to have a conversation with your sponsor about, you know, any, any one of those questions. Okay, so I'll, I'll just comment. Okay. Because um, you asked us how many hours and all that, and you just mentioned all the time wasters that we could do, right? So right. when you talk about hours of working mm. for Juice Plus, you know, we could say we're working because something's hanging over our head and we feel like we're working because we're scrolling or we're, I don't know, thinking about Juice Plus. But unless we're actually talking to people and as Ray Higdon says, have eyes on the presentation, that's real work. Mm -hmm. Talking, following up, making sure they're watching the presentation. That's really it. And using those tools. So to work 20 hours, it's very difficult in the juice. Plus it world. is. Like it even is. you who does, you know, presentations Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then comes on the lunch and learn Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that's six hours. That's not 20, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to even work that much with juice plus if you're doing the right work. So it's really easy to think, oh, going on social media is work or, you know, but if you really are very diligent about making sure that when you spend time, you're writing things down, you're being specific who you're calling, you're following up with people, a number of exposures, or you're proactively posting or proactively saying, I'm just going to find five people to reach out to mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's how you can manage your time better. So you don't have to spend a lot of time, you know? Yeah, thank you for that because that's the whole point. I mean, if we if we think we're working and we're and the hours are going by, my question that I've been asking myself is how many conversations have I had either face to face or on Zoom or um, by text, but real conversations at the end of the day. How many conversations did I have today? And that's the question I like you to ask yourself. How many questions, how many conversations have I had? Because that's what we call the A activities, right? The A, B, and C activities. The A activities are your money-making activities. Those are the ones that, that's where you're actually speaking with someone about the business, not just, hey, how are you doing? And then counting that as a conversation. No, that's not a conversation. That's not a business conversation, right? But when you're actually showing what they say, showing the plan, or either the business plan, or you're showing the PowerPoint, or you're talking to them, uh, sharing a video, sharing, those are your A activities. Then we have your B activities which are very important. However, they are a support to your A activities. And those are learn, lunch and learn. That's a B activity. They're um, going on the freedom revolution and learning more about it. Those are B activities. They support your A activities. And if you have a short amount of time to work with, then it's your A activities that you want to do. You want to make sure that you're having a conversation about the product or about the business or following up, inviting to an event and following up to that event. And my question, a lot of times at the end of the day, I shock myself when I see how few conversations I've really had when I thought I was working all day. So, um, I don't know. I would, like to, I would like to comment on that. So, in the, the closing, which is, it's just incredible, the closing session at GoPro. I mean, mm. um, when he starts giving you your call to action and asking you questions. So, if you have a goal, let's say you get a goal in your head of whatever, then he asks some critical questions, kind of like Nalani's asking. It's like, what are we really doing? And when you say you're working, are you really working? Not in a way where I'm like accusing you of not working. Mm -hmm. I'm accusing myself of not working <laughs> because he asks you things like this. How many people do you, you need to personally recruit to reach your goals? 
because I don't know about you guys, most of you on here have at least, except for really the brand new people, you probably have some team. Once you get team going, it's like, oh, I'm helping my team. I'm not, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm doing a lunch and learn. So I'm helping all you guys right now. We scheduled Milani. So me and Sharon, ooh, we're trading the team, you know, big deal. Where's our new people? Do we have any brand new people? We just, oh my gosh, we have nobody on Sharon. So that, I mean, the, the truth is, this is a great event. Part of it is managing our team and leading it forward. But if we want to grow, if you want to grow, we have to sponsor new people direct to us. And how many, and then it says, he has how many significant lines of sponsorship? So now he goes even further. This is where, and this is, it starts to get a little irritating, right? Um, what if I sponsor 10 people? Well, that doesn't, that's not really going to get me where I need to go because only one out of the 10, maybe two are going to really engage. They're going to come on lunch and learn. So they're going to maybe, maybe one out of a hundred are going to be a qualifier. No, that's not true. Maybe one out of, I, don't, I forget the numbers, not that many, not that few. What, uh, you know, so asking those questions, like how many significant lines of sponsorship are you going to have this year? And maybe it's a little like, pressure but one thing i've noticed and i felt this way after the last gopro and now i feel it again um we have the 80 20 rule right where we don't want to put pressure on our teams but one thing i know from going to gopro now obviously those are all go-getters that are a gopro right they are hungry hungry um but i haven't met anybody that's like rolling like heavy, like when you go into your breakout, one good thing about not being in a Juice Plus breakout room, like I was in a breakout room with these 20 guys in Barcelona that only spoke Spanish and we were using our phones to translate with each other. And there's like 20 guys, they got 50 guys on their team. They've only been doing it six months and they said it's all they do. They're just on fire and they're growing and they're going to get 10 people a new week into their, on their team and all this stuff. And it's like, oh my gosh. So um, I'll give you one more quote, then I'll shut up. I'm trying to use all quotes today. Um, <laughs> if you want, oh, this is Grant Cardone. He's the best. Read that millionaire, how to, how to be a millionaire book. Um, some people take no action. Other people retreat from the action because they're afraid or afraid of failure. Some people take normal action. Normal action is good. You will grow your business slowly over time. But all the people that are rocking and rolling and probably reaching the dreams that you want to reach, if you have big dreams, they're taking massive action. And it looks a little crazy. You know, like when you look, I mean, some of us, are a little crazy in this, right? It's a little crazy, but we're also building big paychecks. So it's, for me, it's something to wrap my mind around because we have time freedom and we have, maybe we have an income, maybe for you, it's an extra income. Maybe you have a spouse that makes good money already and this, you're not totally hungry for this. Um, but for me, I'm just learning that I just need to retrain my brain you know, of like thinking more massive because mm -hmm. doing nothing but GoPro all weekend, I feel good. I feel excited. I haven't felt this good in a while, but when I have time freedom and I take that time and I relax and I'm riding my bicycle and fishing, making a new <laughs> meal in the kitchen, oh, I'm branding myself and all this stuff. It doesn't feel <laughs> as good as, uh, oh, good. Gabrielle, Gabrielle from the dog park just responded, Sharon. She wants to explore it more for sure. Because during Lunch and Learn, I'm texting saying, hey, Gabrielle, what happened? Uh, hey, I want to help you learn how to make some money from home. Oh, I definitely want to learn more about that. And I love that your capsules are vegan. So <laughs> we got to think bigger. Think, maybe think about doing something a little crazy. You know, that's where I think, Nalani, maybe you could explain more because I don't even know what this is. But I think there is some kind of a program that Eric has coming up where there's accountability. I know we've all done 90 day games. We mm -hmm. can all apply. We can all get excited. Mm -hmm. but there's something about like the action game where there's accountability and yeah. you're going to be embarrassed if you don't complete it. I embarrass myself all the time in the action game, but those are my best months, you know. Yeah, it's an acceleration program. Um, yeah. 
And so there's just two more things that I wanted, I really want to press home. And that's number one, this is a business of duplication. If we know of anything else. And so when I say duplication, I don't mean that they have to do, um, do everything that you do. And, and Stacy made a good point with that, you know. However, she duplicated in a way that whatever level she came to, she was able to help somebody else. So if you are brand new and you reach your first level, Partner Plus, as Julie always says, now you can turn around. You know how to get to Partner Plus. So now you can turn around and help your friends do the same thing to get to Partner Plus. And then when you become a QSC, you're able to, you know how you got there. Now you turn around and help them do that. And what does that do? That will multiply your business. And I tell everybody when they ask, well, you know, is that like, you know, a pyramid or something? We know we don't get money from bringing a new partner in. This is not a recruiting game. We're not paying, we're not going to get paid a dime by bringing you in. None of that $52 goes to the person who brought you in, who introduced you to the business. But because we've helped somebody else, the more money we can help them get, then the company compensates us for what we do. And I think that's an awesome thing. We've been talking a lot about Go, uh, Eric Worre. And this is the book, Go Pro, Becoming a Professional, a Network Marketing Professional. This book is amazing. And everything that comes out of it, all of the training that we're getting is based on this book. The audio is just as good. In fact, the audio for me is even better. You can listen to it while you do mundane things. And uh, so is anyone, does anyone have a question or anything regard, um, relating to what we just spoke of? Oh, we've got all these new messages that I have not even seen. Oh, yes, definitely going to GoPro and I'm going to the accelerator program. I've signed up for it. So I may not be available. Who knows? What Congratulations. They're going to Good start job. next week. Well, thank you. So Nalani, I'm sorry. You are you you're in the accelerator program? Yes. Wow, that's great. I just signed up for it. That's amazing. So yeah, it starts in January, and he said he's going to start it next week. He's excited to get it started. Did you take your picture that? with him? No, I did not because I didn't sign up on the first day. Oh. Yeah. I signed up the last day and they weren't okay. taking pictures, even though they said they were, I couldn't find it, so. Mm. What is the accelerator program, Nilani? It's the program of accountability for sure, where you get to be trained weekly, monthly, and it's, for, it's a 12 month program that's going to take you from point A to point B, whatever your goal is, with the top people, I mean, with Eric Worre himself once a week, personally, and with uh, Lisa Nichols and a lot of the other, a lot of the leaders, um, Grant Cardone, I mean, with the top, top people in, in the industry. And um, yeah, that's, a, that's an awesome thing. I'm so curious but not curious enough to just sign up <laughs> but i'm very excited for you i think i mean listen I, our brains we were in sitting in i remember sitting in vegas last year um looking out our window and there was that, that eiffel tower thing right outside remember that sharon and we were just sitting there like overwhelmed at like how much our brains, what we had just learned and experienced, but also feeling like um, we saw, did see a few people from Juice Plus there, but it was really just Jennifer Myers on stage and then Jeff Olson and about 10 people. Other than that, we didn't see anybody. And uh, Lauren Lahop. 
But um, almost feeling like, especially on the Campbell team, like it's almost like we're doing something secret, like we're doing something wrong. You know, we went outside of the system, right? I had a <laughs> Stacy laughing. Oh my gosh, am I going to get in trouble for this? But now it's kind of spreading and it's yeah. exciting. And yeah. like I, I just told Michelle in the chat. In 2017, just, that's funny, Doug. <laughs> what's that? But I went in 2017 with Jennifer. Did you really? I had no idea. Oh, right. I remember Sony. Wow. I had no idea. Yeah, I was sharing like crazy and... Yeah, it was amazing. I wanted to go last year. I didn't make it, but definitely this year. And once again, I don't want you to feel left out, those of you who don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Just know that well, this is the book. He's the this Tony Robbins of network marketing. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then, um, I mean, first step in this is to go to um, network marketing professional. Wait, what is the website? Network marketing pro. Networkmarketingpro.com. And it's a great book. And you know what? It's great on um, Audible as well. Yeah, it and is. And just start learning. I mean, because the book, it's nice. Because the book literally talks about the skills. Mm -hmm. Tammy's got a copy of it on Audible coming her way for Express Tracking to Partner Plus. Nice. Congrats. Oh, Dr. Goddess. Yes. Okay. So she says... <laughs> We're, we're excited that you're here and forgive us for talking a bit over your head, but this will help for sure, I promise you. And get in touch with your sponsor and ask your sponsor to um, let you know more about the tools that we're talking about. The freedomrevolution.com, that's where everything is. It's just that it's a lot there. So your sponsor will help you take one step at a time one bite, one step at a time. Uh, okay, awesome. Hey, Doug, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, I know you were doing the Ray Higdon thing for a while. How, what do you think of the Ray Higdon compared to Eric Worre? I think they're very much um, aligned. I think Ray Higdon is even more toward the um, network marketing model that it they're they're aligned and they're friends and they're good um i think um i've gotten more from the eric worry stuff personally it really does line up if you if you read like when you read grow pro and you look at our scripts i think some of them are literally from the book basically mm -hmm. it's very mm -hmm. lined up mm -hmm. i think uh ray higdon's great it's a little harder to find solid things you know i i just i listen to his stuff i think for leadership um what is that leadership book called it's, sure? it's good what's yeah. it called something leadership i want to ray higdon something leadership for oh, dummies it. or it it is super super so i think it's great but he doesn't offer a conference like this he did we didn't like it so we went you guys didn't hear about it <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, I did not okay. like it. We liked what? Eric Worre. Yeah. When did I go to Eric Worre? didn't even watch the last day or so. Oh, of Higdon? Yeah. Higdon. I don't even remember it. It was during our other conference. It was during Juice Plus Live, actually. Oh. So we mm. love him on podcasts. We love his book on leadership. We love Ray Higdon himself. But this GoPro. $97 well, next December. You do not want to miss that. And I think Ray Higdon serves a different purpose for me in that um, worry is about leading the team, like the systems, the nuts and bolts of leading. Whereas Higdon's more of like philosophical of the leadership of the team. And then um, Ray Higdon, but uh, flipping that, Ray Higdon's podcast is awesome because they'll literally say like what if somebody says hey isn't this a pyramid scheme and then he'll go off for like five minutes of how to answer that and how to talk about it so yeah. i think they offer different Definitely things love Ray Higgins. yeah i like them both i feel like eric worry has taken it to the next level though with mm -hmm. how he presents and he brings in people that are experts in specific areas that he may not be the best at explaining. So he brings in some of the best of the best um, to explain how to share your story, 
how to, um, I mean, Eric is amazing at talking about the systems and those type of things, but there's areas where he does outsource the best of the best to come in and share and collaborate alongside him. So I love Ray Higdon too, because I feel like Ray Higdon gives you actual examples of how to like go over an objection or, you know, how to overcome certain things that are just more you can implement right away kind of in your business if you're going through that issue. So I feel bad for um, um, Dr. Goddess Mona and whoever else is new on this. Well, we're going to meet with them right after this, Dougie. Oh, good. Oh, I also awesome. put a link. We're having the a Freedom Revolution, <laughs> Password Revolution. That's where and you got to just kind of start your journey. Her and Tammy, welcome to the team. We're going to uh, talk to them. Excellent. Like your dog. Yeah, you the, I just the, I just wanted to make the point that we're we're not making money selling stuff. Um, it's what we when we duplicate ourselves, helping ourselves to get what it is that we would like to have. We're gonna help other people do the same. That's what it's all about. And the how to is in the tools, which is right there on the freedom revolution so we get to use what we have so that um we don't have to figure it out we have all the answers mm -hmm. yeah you're muted kathy <laughs> can't thank gloria and stacy and even my daughter jennifer they have really i've done it for four years but I have learned so much from them and they're always available and um, you can just click on an appointment with Stacy for a three-way call at any, you know, on these days. And, you know, I don't think there's any, any business that has this much support and uh, personal growth, just like these lunch and learns. I don't ever want to miss them. You get nuggets of, amazing stuff every single time so thanks to doug and sharon for doing this we appreciate it so much but those leaders above us are just amazing they are the very best uh stacy is amazing in asking questions she's taught me that mm. what are the questions you need to be asking because sometimes we just rattle off rattle off but you need to learn to listen and ask questions and that's what i'm that's what i'm striving for so thank you to our leader so much ditto thank you amen awesome what a blessing well it's time for us to go duplicate <laughs> and how many have some conversations Good what a great time many... hey uh wednesday take your dog to work day come on with your favorite animal all right <laughs> Oh, family yes. Picture, family picture on Wednesday with your favorite animal in the beginning, all right? Hey, I got to pick out, I got to pick outfits out. We got our Christmas outfit. Your, your oh, I think, ready. I think Hurley will wear this. <laughs> we could do like Christmas pajamas on Wednesday or something. There That's we go. Cute. Holiday, holiday happiness with our pets. Let's go. Awesome. I can't even imagine my um, German Shepherd letting me put him in. A you got to bring him in, Michelle. I want to yes. See. I'd be so Let's beat up by the hat. time that was over. <laughs> you know, I've never seen the dog. I'm afraid, I didn't even know you had I'm one. afraid to even look out the back window when I'm over there. Show. He's like 85 pounds. I mean, he gets oh, No way. That's king. Oh. <laughs> I remember him as a puppy. Oh, my gosh. Adorable. <laughs> All right. Bring your, your animal to work day. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you, Nilani. Thank you, Nilani. Thank you, Nilani. Nilani, you did amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, ladies. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Great job, Nilani. Okay. We're going to meet with Dr. Goddess Mona and Tammy, so we'll go ahead and get started. Go ahead, Sony.
Awesome. So you guys can hear me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, so Tammy did start in October, like she said, 